you're looking for an internship, right? At least, kind of. Why else would you have clicked on this video? So, you get what I'm saying. You understand the struggle. When you apply for hundreds of jobs and automatically get rejected, or knock that interview out of the park yet never hear back. Anyway, you get the point. And now, you're probably feeling a little self-doubt, a little frustration, a little lost, so you decide to take a little break. Now you're seeing videos of people getting laid off, or even worse, someone who got an offer while you're here with nothing. And obviously, this just demotivates you and instead of applying for jobs today, you decide to watch TV instead. And you do the same thing the next day, and the next day, and the next, and just like that, it's March and you haven't gotten an internship yet. See, you and me, we're not too different. I too was looking for a shortcut. I too was super envious of all my peers and classmates who were getting interviews or offers. I was so sure that there was some sort of secret to their success that they were hiding. But I decided to keep grinding and eventually I got eight offers in three months. For those of you who are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Ranesh and I'm a data scientist currently working in a tech startup. Not too long ago, I was going through the roller coaster of internship hunting as a senior in college. And since then, I've interviewed dozens of candidates, given out numerous referrals and helped many others land their first internship. So with all that said, here's my take on how to get an internship in 2025. Chapter one, understand the game. The first step here is understanding what you're up against. If this is your first time applying to jobs or internships, you have a lot to learn. So obviously, if you're gonna be applying for jobs, you're gonna need a resume, and in my opinion, a lot of people spend way too much time deciding what resume to choose. Other smart people have done the hard work for us in determining what resumes are best to use for internship searches, especially in the tech field. So all you have to do is just use the template I linked in the description box below. You might be asking, why does it matter what resume I use? Well, these days, there's this thing called an applicant tracking system, better known as an ATS, which essentially filters out over 80% of the applications for each job. So if you don't wanna be one of those people, you will do what the ATS tells you to. So what is ATS? I personally like thinking of ATS like a test. However, you are graded based on how much you match their ideal candidate. You can study for this test based on the job description or any other information you can gather for the job. And just like a test, if your handwriting is illegible, you're unlikely to get a good grade. If the resume you use isn't formatted in an ATS friendly way, they're unlikely going to be able to parse it, which means you're not going to be graded well either. Now, if you want to learn more about the ATS system and how they parse your resume, I've made several other videos explaining that process. So feel free to check them out. Now, generally for internships, you're going to be competing with a lot of other people just because you don't have to have a degree to be an intern. This means you need to find ways to stand out and be the best candidate in the bunch. These days, most internship applications get thousands of candidates applying, and depending on the company, they generally only interview a couple dozen candidates at most. If you're looking to learn when's the best time to apply for these internships, I made a detailed video breaking down when's the best time to apply for these various different internships based on the company size. Chapter two, play to win. Once you understand the game, you'll have a whole new perspective of what you need to do to win. The reality is you only need one win to get an internship. The problem is you can get this win in your first application or your first 10, first 100, first 1000, no one really knows. It's truly a numbers game, but you can create your own luck. There are a number of ways for you to tilt the skills to your favor. You just have to be willing to put in the work to get there. There's a process that I personally recommend following so you can maximize your chances. First, you need to figure out what you're lacking and how you're gonna split your time and focus. For example, if your resume is basically empty, I personally recommend getting more experience via independent projects or volunteer work first. I know that's a little extreme of an example, but my recommendation is to look at five different job descriptions for a similar role title and seeing if you match the description. If you can't confidently say that you meet over 80% of what the job descriptions are asking for, I would strongly recommend for you to reset your expectations and focus on what you can do to build your experience independently. A lot of people think getting an internship is the only way to gain experience, but that's just simply not true. There's a lot of steps that you have to take before looking or applying for your first internship, but not a lot of people are willing to put in that work. So if you're one of those people who are unwilling to put in the work before landing your first internship, I'm sorry to say, the chances of you landing one is close to none. Maybe you get lucky and go to a big name school where the reputation is strong enough to get you a job. Maybe your dad works at a company or knows someone who works at a company and is in the position to hire you as an intern. That's great, but if you're like me who went to an average or below average school and didn't really know anyone who could pull that kind of strings to get me a job, well, you're just gonna have to put in the work. Another thing I wanted to mention is if all you have in your resume is just a generic project that you found on Kaggle where 
hundreds or thousands of other people have also done it. Or maybe you found a project in class that you chose to do where all your other classmates also did that. You're just not going to be able to stand out. Of course, these basic and generic projects are necessary to help you learn and get familiar with the fundamentals. But at a certain point, you're going to have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and work on a project that is unique to you that will make you stand out. I've seen so many cool and unique projects come through. For example, I've had a student track their own blood sugar data over a couple of years and made a project about their diabetes experience and other students who track their uh, rec league stats and made a sports project that was unique to them. My advice, once you're comfortable enough with the basics, is to think of something that is unique to you that could also be a conversation starter during an interview. And also remember what tools, technologies, and skills were in those job descriptions so you can use them in your projects too. Once you have some of these more unique projects under your belt, it's time to climb to the next step of the pyramid. This is where you branch out and look for some volunteer work to gain more experience on your resume. Yes, independent work is important, but for a lot of internships, you're gonna be working in a team. This doesn't have to be anything complex or complicated. You can do what I did and start off with your best friend's dad's company, your church or local gas station. Maybe their needs are small and they just need some help with Excel sheets and you can automate that process maybe through a warehouse or through some sort of BI tool. Or maybe they need complicated dashboards and reporting for specific metrics that you can help with for free just to gain more experience. Whatever it is, just keep trying until you find something that sticks so that you can expand your resume. The goal here is for you to find a problem, use that skill set that you've built to solve that problem and document it on your resume. This will then be one of your first few relevant experiences listed on your resume. And then from here, you can climb on into a more challenging and consistent role. If you're in school, try asking your professors if they need any help with their research work or maybe if they need a TA. Or you can do what I did and look for unpaid internships. If your current skill set isn't good enough to get unpaid jobs, you're probably not going to be very successful when looking for paid internships. The goal here is to get more relevant experience and buff up your resume just a little bit more. And who knows, maybe your professors or your employers know someone who's hiring and can give you a referral or a rec letter. At this point, your resume should be in a good enough spot to start looking for internships. Each section and bullet point on your resume has a different weight, so make sure to curate yours based on your unique achievements. If you're going to a bigger name university like Georgia Tech or UC Berkeley, maybe put that at the top. If you have a ton of relevant experience, then make more room for that. If you've done a lot of independent projects, then feel free to make more room for that too. But just know that experience and skills are usually the most important sections. When it's finally time for you to start applying, it's worth for you to come up with a few strategies. For example, some of you might already have multiple internships or previous experiences in a specific niche, which should make this process easier. In this case, in my opinion, since you already have a specialized niche, is to focus on higher quality applications. By this, I mean only applying to companies and positions that you are a very, very good fit for and trying to maximize those applications with referrals and by having a relationship with the hiring manager. If you wanna learn more about getting these referrals and reaching out to the hiring manager, I'll get there in a second. Now, for those of you who just don't have as much previous experience, or maybe you just went through the pyramid I talked about before, you're probably gonna be applying to a lot more jobs, and I mean a lot more. A few years back, it took on average about 300 applications for someone in our field to land an internship, but these days, I think that number is much higher, maybe even around a thousand. And for some of you, it'll be even more. The key here is to play the numbers game, but focus your time and energy on applying to the jobs that have the highest likelihood of landing an interview. Now, you might be wondering, how do I determine which application has the highest rate for success? Well, I base it off a few things. Generally, you want to prioritize jobs that you're a good match for. You also want to be an early applicant. And if you're going to be applying for an on-site job, you want to make sure you're within 60 miles of the on-site location. So for example, if your resume is a 90% match to that job or greater, and if that job was posted in the past 24 hours, and if it's an on-site job, if that job is within your zip code, then I would strongly recommend applying for that job first. Now, some of you might be wondering, how do you determine if you're a good match for that job? Well, I personally use the combination of various different ATS tools like JobRite, Simplify, I even made my own. Uh, to compare and contrast the different ATS scores I got and come up with the best resume I could put forward for that job application. Now, in terms of where to apply, I personally used Handshake a lot when I was looking for internships because I knew it was exclusive, but I do understand that not everyone will have access to it. So if you don't, then maybe consider using other tools like Glassdoor, LinkedIn, and Indeed too. I know LinkedIn is very saturated right now, but it's still the most popular job board today. And again, like I said before, if you wanna maximize your chances of getting an interview, you should cater each application to the company as best as possible. This might mean customizing your resume for that job description specifically, or even emailing the recruiter or hiring manager to introduce yourself. This is obviously not gonna be an easy or straightforward process, but it will increase your chances. Like I said before, I recommend using JobRite, Simplify, and some other tools to automate these processes and save you some time too. 
I'll leave all the tools and technology that I recommend down in the description box below. So if you're interested, go check it out. Also, most business emails are structured in a way where it's first name dot last name at companydomain.com. So if you happen to know your recruiter or hiring manager's name, you could potentially try cold emailing them. I will say though, some job descriptions clearly state to not email or message anyone on the team or the hiring manager. So do read the job description thoroughly. At this point, the metric you should care about is interview rate and cold applying generally has the lowest success rate when it comes to interview conversions. However, like I said before, if you apply with a curated resume specifically for that job, you will stand a better chance. You could also use referrals to your advantage because generally referrals almost always leads to an interview. Personally, I found that the best way to get referrals was to ask my classmates or my peers who had internship experience to refer me to their companies. I also found that utilizing my professor's network was pretty beneficial. Most people complain about getting referrals through cold outreach via LinkedIn or email, and I totally understand. However, I do truly think this is an expectation issue. If you expect to get a response or a referral for every email or message you send out, you are going to be disappointed. Think about it from their perspective for a sec. You're asking them to stick their neck out for you with nothing in return. So what are the chances of them responding? There's a ton of different templates out there for cold messaging strategies. And I definitely do think you should do your research and experiment with some of them. However, I personally found that the most successful approach was to connect with them on a personal level and ask them about themselves. Most people love talking about themselves, so this isn't a bad idea to try out. Maybe consider spending five to 10 minutes researching that person before sending that connection request, and you might just have better chances. These days, I mostly proactively connect with people who work at companies or positions that I would love to work for someday, and maybe somewhere down the line, if a position opens up in their team or if their company is hiring, it becomes much easier to ask for that referral. I've also had many friends who managed to get referrals just from having natural conversation in a group setting. One of them got a referral while playing badminton with a stranger and the other one got a referral through their table tennis club. My recommendation is truly to just be casual when you're networking. Instead of directly asking for a referral, maybe the next time you go to class or go to church, just talk about your job search process and your experiences. And maybe if someone is in the position to help you, they will. Also, if your school hosts a career fair, I strongly recommend taking advantage of that opportunity. The whole goal at this stage is to get your resume seen by a human and interact with them. So a career fair is a massive shortcut. If you know of a career fair coming up, my advice to you would be to do a ton of research on the companies that are coming and print out a bunch of physical resumes to hand out and treat this like an interview. Even better, if you wanna stand out, you can print out some business cards with a QR code on them pointing to your web portfolio or your resume. Generally, I find that since everyone is giving them a resume, they might misplace yours or lose yours entirely. Whereas something like a business card they can keep in their pocket, maybe when they go home or go back to their office, they can look at your resume or portfolio and give you a call. I've even known of a couple people who took the initiative to go to the physical locations of these companies before the career fair to introduce themselves. Chapter three, learn to love the game. Now that you understand the rules of the game and its objective, you have to stay consistent. I'm gonna keep it plain and simple. You're gonna have to make it a habit based on your goals. Whether it's applying to 10 or 20 jobs a day, starting a new project, or even networking, you're going to have to find a way to stay consistent. Some companies might only post new job openings at Friday at 10 p.m., whereas other companies might post it on a different day at a different time. You have to do this every single day to have the best chance of success. I don't wanna get into all the things in Atomic Habits, but there are definitely ways and strategies you can use to solidify this as a habit. I recommend setting aside one to two hours a day for these tasks, depending on what you need to do. Obviously, if you're a complete beginner with no experience, you're going to have to do a lot more to get your first internship. Even if you have a pretty stacked resume and you wanna land your dream internship, you might wanna focus on referrals and networking, reiterate on your process, change up what isn't working and continue with what is. For instance, if you're consistently getting auto-rejected and you applied to over 100 jobs, maybe you should revisit your resume. Or maybe you're getting a ton of different interviews, but you're not moving forward to the next step then you should probably focus on interview prep. A lot of people, when they think of data science and data analytics, they focus on the technical part. But in my opinion, one of the most important parts of data science is storytelling. If you can't translate the insights that you found to a stakeholder in a meaningful manner, then they're not gonna understand you. If you've noticed, I haven't really talked too much about interview prep in this video, and that's because most people give up before getting an actual interview. Based on some of the surveys I've seen online and some of the surveys that I've put out, I noticed a lot of you guys aren't really getting too many interviews. But I strongly believe that if you follow the steps I mentioned in this video, and most importantly, stay consistent and keep working on yourself every day, you will eventually get an interview. And once you do, here's how you ace it. 
For most internships, they don't really focus too much on the technical interviews, so I'd start with the behavioral part. Generally, these questions are about how you manage challenges during your project, your communication style, teamwork experience, etc. The good news here is that there are proven strategies to answer these questions, for example, like the STAR method. And I talk about these strategies in depth in some of my other videos. I'll leave them linked down below for you guys to check them out. For the technical interview, I would firstly start with SQL, Python, and also probably brush up on some ML and stats concepts. Depending on the caliber of your internships, you're probably only gonna have one technical interview, and this might be a panel interview or just a coding interview where you code on a blackboard or something like that. So I would highly focus on some of the basic skills like SQL joins, um, aggregates, some Python queries with pandas, NumPy, uh, some basic ML concepts, when to use a regression model, when to use a classification model, some optimization techniques and stuff like that. Or maybe you're going for a higher caliber internship and you're expecting maybe three rounds of technical interviews. In this case, I would strongly recommend practicing a lot of different ML concepts, looking at historical questions on Glassdoor, or maybe even leak code or Reddit or blind to understand what questions have been asked before and try to practice those questions as much as possible. Even better, if you have an alumni in your school or a senior who's done that internship before, you can try to ask them for the questions they were asked. It might also be worth looking at some BI questions like dashboard choices or chart choices for specific data. Like I said before, there are a ton of resources for this like W3Schools, datalemur.com, leak code, and I'll leave them all linked down below. It's also very important to understand that an interview is a two-way street, so make sure to do a lot of research on the company and the recruiter to ask questions at the end. In my experience, it's been a major red flag if the candidate just asks some basic questions or doesn't ask any questions at all. I can't tell you how many offers I got or interviews I've passed because I came up with curious and personalized questions about the recruiter or the company, which shows them that I did my homework. Honestly, asking good questions at the end of any interview can literally save a bad interview. Also, it's generally good practice to know what the company's business model, core values, and mission is before going in for that interview. I've had several bad experiences with candidates who don't even know what our business model is, yet expect us to give them an offer. Another tip that I wanna share is that I generally create a cheat sheet for each company I interview with, with some unique facts about the company, some unique facts about the interviewer, some basic machine learning and Python or SQL queries, just so I remember during the interview and don't forget. I totally understand that it can be intimidating and overwhelming to remember everything that you've practiced during an interview, so don't be afraid to make a cheat sheet. Listen, I'm not gonna pretend like I fully understand what you're going through right now, but I hope you don't give up. Most people going through this try to run off motivation, but that's not gonna work. You need to be disciplined if you're gonna get through this. And yes, I know it's easier said than done, but that's the point. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. I think less than 10% of my graduating class graduated with an internship, and that truly helped me land my full-time job. It's totally normal to fall, it's completely okay to be demotivated, but the ones who succeed get back up and keep going. I think it's safe to say that for most of you, you're going to have to go through this process one way or another. The more you put it off, the longer you procrastinate it, the more it's gonna hurt you in the future. If you've gotten this far, I'm confident that you've heard all this before, but now the ball is in your court and it's time for you to apply it. I don't think I need to tell you about all the rejections you're gonna get, how much you'll get ghosted, and even how much time and energy you're gonna have to put in. If you want it hard enough, or even better, if you need it bad enough, you will put through. And for those of you who are just getting started, you might need more time to get to where you want to be. But the point is that you need to do this, so why not start now? Like I said before, it might take 10 applications or 10,000, only God knows, but it's on you to keep going. I hope you now understand that the true secret that will get you through the entire process is resilience. If you found any value in this video, consider subscribing for weekly videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.